Hey, Foot Clan, this season, get football on your time with NFL Game Pass. You can catch every snap from every game with full game replays, and you can see all the plays in just 45 minutes with condensed games. You'll learn from the league's best players in over 40 film session episodes, and you get access to the entire NFL Films archive. Just go to NFL.com slash footballers to start your free trial today. NFL Game Pass, where football never stops. Hey, this is David Johnson, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. <laughs> Welcome into the show, Friday, September 11th. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. A Friday episode. Had a moment last night when that football was kicked off. Oh, <sighs> oh, the you're talking like the the release of uh, three months of clenched. Butt, butt cheeks. cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Three months. I had a lot more than three months. I uh no, it was it was incredible. It was so much fun. Enjoyed the game with the family. I know you guys did the same. And wow, we're here. We did it. We got to football and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell. We're gonna go live this afternoon, answer some questions over on the YouTubes so you can join us. Twitter at the FF Ballers. The fantasyfootballers.com is the website. We've got the DFS pass over there. We've got DFS articles, tools. If you are playing DFS this year, you want to check that out for sure. Um, it's Friday. It is. That's a big deal. Put Clan Friday. All right, every Friday we give something away from Pristine Auction. And today's winner, Lewis Walker. Oh, Lewis. Lewis, you, you old, old dog. You old dog. <laughs> he won a signed Devontae Adams jersey. So congratulations. Thank you for supporting the show over at jointhefoot.com. You can uh, use that code BALLERS, and you get $10 off at pristineauction.com. Congratulations. Yep. Lewis old so-and-so all right reactions to last night's game it was awesome to watch football uh fantasy reactions to last night oh game. it's so it many was awesome to watch clyde edwards alaire and david johnson <laughs> yes uh yeah like the, the big story of the night was clyde edwards alaire and it was like no just just like everything else for 2020 it was like Here's what you're expecting, but here's what we're going to give you. And we still got the massive fantasy game for the rookie. You know, 25 carries, 138 yards on the ground and a touchdown. But that's that's the wild part. I was expecting Clyde edwards alaire maybe he gets 15 carries and then you're like he covers it with uh you know, a handful of receptions except uh he had two targets and no receptions. Like it, it was absolutely wild, but he looked, oh man, he looked so good on that touchdown run. Yeah, the oh, cutback. Yeah. The the he just left two defenders absolutely broken on the ground. He he looked electric. He is going to be incredible. Uh, to me, I'm. But but oh yes, voice of public opinion. But Mike, he failed on all six of his goal line attempts. He certainly did. Did you know Lev Bell only had six goal line attempts all last year? He he certainly failed. Uh, I, from my perspective, watching the film, his offensive line failed him miserably for the vast majority of those. When you have to spin out of the way because J.J. Watt is in the backfield only to be clobbered by somebody else, that's not on you. Uh, but the, uh, the the big news was the opportunity was there. And yeah, it kept happening. I, I don't. I mean, I I said this a couple times last night. I don't think he's a goal line back. He's not. He's not made for that role. He's certainly not a big bodied guy. And when you get on the goal line, is Nick Chubb a goal line back? 
Yes, and because so he I, failed over and over last year too. Oh, I, I I don't agree. I think Clyde is a goal linebacker. My my point is, when you got on the goal line. You had, you know, it was it was different because they were opening up holes through the 20s. It was once you get to that goal line package and the defense puts all their big guys in. I don't think Andy Reid's going to keep that strategy going forward. He's right. a great offensive mind. He's going to get down to the goal line, and he's going to give it to Clyde Edwards-Alaire still, but not just to run it up through a jumbo package up the middle. Agreed. Th they're going to be more creative. And so that, it felt like Kansas City was just was toying with the Houston Texans the entire time. I don't think we saw – any, much, anything much. unleashed from Kansas City. They're like, oh, wow, we can just give it to, <laughs> to the rookie 25 times? So, yeah, you, you would look at last night. We, we didn't know what to expect. Clyde edwards alert no receptions right. in the game. No uh, success on the goal line. Still a massive fantasy football week. He's going to have some huge games this year. He's going to be great. He's not Saquon Barkley, but he is a huge step up for this team. Um, low center of gravity, breaks tackles. And I was impressed with the debut. Mahomes was Mahomes. He, when you talk about just kind of toying with the defense, it was a, a casual 211 passing yards. Didn't have to do much in the second half. Three touchdowns. Uh, the the big story. I mean, it's week one, but <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Watkins seven for 82 and a touchdown. Because Nine targets. Course. Trade him. <laughs> If you have what do you him, mean trade him? <laughs> Nobody has him. If you have him, trade him. Uh, I mean, you. I, I know it's it's one of those. Well, it's because it happened last year. We just expect it, but at the same time, it happened last year. He he's always had a lot of targets, and I'm not going to hop on the the put him into my starting lineup until he's done it three weeks in a row. Oh, I was that was the question I was going to ask is. I was going to bed last night laughing about Sammy Watkins doing his week one thing. Mm -hmm. And my son uh, played him in our family league last night because he wanted somebody in the game. Genius. And I was asking myself, how many weeks does Sammy Watkins have to be fantasy relevant for me to, th to believe? The answer in my head was five. Five, wow. five weeks. Whoa. The answer to me is two. If Sammy Watkins has another game of involvement, you know, eight targets or so and gives me 40 to 50 yards, yeah, then I, I will play him. This you is, fool. <laughs> certainly. Hey, look, I, I totally get that, but this is now four straight good games for Sammy Watkins. They weren't fantasy relevant last year, but this he had a monster run throughout the playoffs, and maybe something was figured out. I don't know. But I'm not playing him next week. I'm not falling for it that quickly. All right, on the other side, Deshaun Watson. Uh <laughs> I mean, frankly, Deshaun Watson was oh. able to put it together with the soft Chiefs defense over the second half. Yeah, that rushing touchdown really saved some things. You think he missed? You think he missed DeAndre Hopkins at all? They looked like a team <laughs> that needed a number one wide receiver. It's it's just one week, so I'm not going to incite panic in the streets for Houston Texans fans. But that 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 looked like. Uh, uh, I guess the, the comp would be for me. I'm going to a different sport, but back when uh, LeBron James was all alone on the Cleveland Cavaliers and the play call was, uh, LeBron, figure it out. Like that's what was being, that's what was happening to Deshaun Watson. They were saying, oh, Watson figured it out. And then Watson goes, oh, oh no, DeAndre Hopkins isn't here. I don't know what to do. David Johnson, Ooh. 11 Ooh. carries, 77 yards on the ground, a touchdown, three uh, catches, 32 yards. Um, he looked pretty good yeah, he for a game that was going completely sideways game script-wise for David Johnson's involvement. My favorite part of the game for David Johnson was when he was he got shook. Something happened to his arm, and he's on the sideline. And then he went full on from the prestige where – he was the guy who was injured on the sideline, and then all of a sudden he's back in the game, and Duke Johnson is, in fact, the one who's leaving the field. <laughs> it, it, was in, it was insane. Can we replace this injury with the other D. Johnson? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Jason has David Johnson on a legal record and was in full Jason Moore panic tilt mode the I've, second he walked to the sideline. <laughs> I've been known to, to <laughs> tilt quickly mid-game. Will Fuller, 8 for 112 was the only notable pass catcher. Randall Cobb, two for 23. Brandon Cooks, two for 20. Kenny Stills, zero catches. Fuller had a, uh, one or two drops. 
Yeah. But he was by far the best receiver on the field. Mm -hmm. Ten he, targets. Hear me out. I, I think Will Fuller sucked, and this was the result. I mean, he had 31% of the target share. Yep. He ended up with over 100 yards, and I don't think he had a particularly great game. He did not. And so – the, the thing that has always really been bad about Will Fuller, other than injuries, is that even when he's been out there, he has disappeared. Mm -hmm. If you don't get the big blow-up game, the floor is low. But maybe with this Will Fuller, the floor is actually safe, and you're still going to have the opportunity for big games. He showed me a lot as far as – it wasn't him. It was – he was the clear first read. Now, we can't overreact because Brandon Cooks was – barely in practice, missed some training camp, was limited, might still have been limited as far as his speed on the field. Um, but from the takeaway from week one is that y you can really trust Will Fuller as of this moment. You guys remember months ago when I said I thought the Texans would start 0-4 this year and be a disaster? Oh, it's mm -hmm. Baltimore next week. Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Minnesota. Oh, the man. next three weeks after what you saw last night, They've got a chance. You know what, to be Bill O'Brien? Bill O'Brien will find a way to just beat Baltimore next week, and that will count as like a sixteen-game out of jail free card. Mm, I take I the bet yeah. on the other <laughs> side of that <laughs> one. No, he won't. He finds a way to win these games sometimes, but yeah, it doesn't. It didn't look great. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right, Kenny Galladay did not practice on Thursday, was very limited today. He plays on Sunday at 1 Eastern. So uh, Matt Patricia came out and said he wants to be careful. In or out, what do you think? I think he'll play. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I think he'll play. Are you playing him is the more important question for fantasy football players. <sighs> if I have a good pivot, uh, a Deshaun Jackson-level pivot, I would put in D-Jax over Kenny Galladay. Just to be Kareem safe. Hunt or Kenny Galladay in your flex. <laughs> Why is that? Why such a specific random question? random choice of possible <laughs> flex plays? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. the The difference there to me is my matchup. If I am great elsewhere and I look like I'm the favored matchup, I would put in Kareem Hunt just to make sure I don't end up with some zero. Uh, but if I need a big play and I'm playing a juggernaut in my league. I think you got to roll with Kenny Galladay, hope for a, a deep touchdown. All right, Cortland Sutton, big news yesterday. He went down with a shoulder injury in practice. Broncos fans had just stopped gasping from the Von Miller injury. Turned out to be a better-than-expected report. Yeah. Sprained right AC joint. However, Cortland Sutton is the Monday night football game. Uh, we talked to our injury expert, Matthew Betts, who is now hosting a special injury blitz podcast an exclusive podcast for jointhefoot.com supporters after the friday pra practice reports come out bets is putting out a 15 minute quick injury update podcast so if you want to get that go to jointhefoot.com he said i uh, i do think he can play it's a matter of whether he decides to get an injection um he's not expecting him to practice though how much confidence can you really have going into monday night if you don't have a pivot on oh, monday no. night you can't play Cortland Sutton. No, 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 no. Because of the Monday night, you got to look, you got to bail out. And maybe uh maybe this changes things for Jerry Judy. So I'll, I'll that's the bigger question to me, Jason, is it I guess we should be talking about Sutton, but I want to talk about Jerry Judy cuz he's the new exciting rookie. Are you more more likely to put Jerry Judy in a lineup as a flex play now? Um I I don't I don't yet. Okay. I mean, I I was already willing to put him into the lineup, so I I am willing. But I don't look at this injury and say I'm now I now I have to start okay. Jerry Judy. It's a tough matchup. They've got the Titans, and that's part of why I'm not going to trust Sutton week one, not knowing, you know, first of all whether he'll be there, and second how it will impact his production in a tough matchup. You have to pivot. Noah Fant a better play because of potentially more target share. It's, he's yeah. interesting, yeah. Mike Evans, what's the latest on the hamstring? Uh, so this one really sucks. Um, he was back at practice on Friday, uh, but the the matchup, we've seen Mike Evans kind of be uh, stinky stink uh, against the New Orleans Saints and Marshawn Lattimore. So what did he have? A, he had a uh, 
Yeah. He, he had a full-on goose. Yeah, he, he may have done that. And, and then four for... It, look, it was bad. It was bad. Let's, let's move on to the Tough future. matchup, hamstring injury. I don't like it. I'm probably still playing him. Like, it you, sounded like you were not going to play him. And then you ended with, but difficult. I'm probably going to play him. It's difficult week one Yeah, not to play who you drafted. It's one of the biggest challenges that fantasy football players have is not going into this, being able to pivot out of a higher draft pick for a lower one right. to kick the year off. Well, let me ask you this, Mike. We, we share a team. We have Mike Evans on that team. Would you rather play Sammy Watkins? Whoops. <laughs> yes, I would like to do that. Can we go back in yeah, time? I'm the commish, so yeah, let me make a note here. <laughs> Deontay Johnson has a uh, recent foot injury mispractice on Thursday. He should be good to go, though. Okay. David Montgomery upgraded uh, to full. This is bananas, the recovery that uh, the groin of Montgomery has seen. <laughs> <laughs> Powerful and full look, Full practice. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. my groin. Ah. <laughs> oh, no, McGroin. no, no. Uh <laughs> Um, the important uh, thing here is is if you need a start, he should be available. He should be out there. Yep. Um, yesterday we had my, you know, we talk about Miles Sanders. It's kind of like if Miles Sanders is on the field, you're going to play him this week. He was limited yesterday. Do you think he's in? I do, and I would like to say this is as excited as I am for football. This is the stupidest Week One injury report that we have ever had. Ever. We Where, reject this injury report. Like Miles Sanders, second round pick. Kenny Galladay, second third round pick. Mike Evans, second round pick. This is stupid. Injuries are not fair. Well, and and these things. That's how you know real football is back. <laughs> yeah. But these things should happen after you know they play football, right? right? Like you draft. I mean, we drafted the day before. The and it was too soon. And it was too <laughs> soon. What happened? Scrimmages. They're a dangerous game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, any other injury news? I mean, do you think Jalen Rager's out there? You're not playing Jalen Rager, are you? I'm not playing him, but I think that he's going to show up and get some snaps. We think Devontae Parker will be in there? Yep. All right. Any other injury updates that you need uh, after this podcast? Like I said, we have a new injury blitz podcast at jointhefoot.com that you can check out. Um, very excited about that. Matthew Betts, a great injury expert, and uh, we lean on him for all of his mm -hmm. injury news. All news. right. Before we get into the fantasy forecast, I want to thank a new sponsor, Shipped. Actually, they're not new for me. I've been using Shipped for about two years, and it is excellent. Shipped is delivery done differently. They're expert shoppers. They'll pick up fresh groceries. They'll pick up tech gadgets or video games, even pet supplies from local stores around you that you love. And you can get everything delivered to your door in as soon as one hour. So you can save time for good stuff. You can save time. I'm afraid for, of how much you must use this. It's one of those things. Well, I mean, put yourself in my shoes. You could either rewatch a show for the hundredth time mm -hmm. or take the kids, load them up, go to the grocery store, put on the mask. No, I'm using shipped. Mm -hmm. I'm having it come right here. They they have, you know, really expert shoppers. They can get good quality produce. They can go to so many different local stores around you and get it to you really, really yeah, quickly. It's perfect. Uh, you can try same-day delivery for yourself at shipped.com slash footballers today. That's shipped, S-H-I-P-T dot com slash footballers and foot clan uh, andy alluded to it a little bit but just a quick reminder join the foot.com you can help support this independent podcast and you get a whole bunch of really cool stuff like the brand new injury podcast premium projections our flex rankings the start sit tool unlocks to four players i mean there's our all, new book our you get it look you get a free book there's un, there's an unbelievable amount of goodies over there that you get so and We'll get an extra podcast every single week. If you want to check out that and more, it's jointhefoot.com. Fantasy Forecast. All right, we're back into the matchups week one. We've got eight games to talk about, so take a deep breath, gentlemen. It's time to go. Oh, let's see if you can do it. All right. Uh, on yesterday's show, we talked about the Jets and the Bills, Chicago, Detroit, Green Bay, Minnesota, Miami, New England, Philly, Washington, the Raiders and the Panthers, and the Colts and Jacksonville. So 
If you want those breakdowns, they're on yesterday's episode of the podcast, and you can check those out. Let's start here. We have the Seahawks traveling to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. Uh, this game has a, uh, a tight line. The Seahawks are actually two-point road favorites. This was very close to my almost upset of the week. 49-point uh, over-under that has moved up in recent days. And uh, we get to see the debut of Jamal Adams on the defensive side of the ball for Seattle, whether they can bring back that secondary of old. But what are the big storylines for you in this game? Jason, you have Matt Ryan. You talked about it yesterday. He's your start of the week. Yeah, well. Expecting big things. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I expect this is a game that could very easily hit the over, could have a lot of points scored. You have two solid offenses, two good quarterbacks, um, and, you know, you, you lost to Davian Clowney on, on the Seahawks side. Obviously, they, they did add Jamal Adams, which will be uh, very helpful. But I, I think that this is two offenses that, for the most part, are together. You know, there's there's no relearning for Julio and Matt Ryan or relearning for uh, Russell Wilson and, and Tyler Lockett. Todd Gurley is really the only – new offensive piece here between these teams. So well, I Hayden I, Hurst. I do like the matchup. That's that's true. Hayden Hurst um is out there as well. I I like the matchup. There I think Todd Gurley is going to be what all eyes are on on the the 100%, Falcons side. Yeah. You want to see what we saw from David Johnson last night. You want to go, "Wow, there's some burst. He looks good. He's able to, you know, carry a full workload and and you also want to see what is that workload like? Are they going to say, look, he's on a one-year deal. We're just going to give him the rock and let him, you know, wear the tires out? Or are they going to try to limit him and save him? That would be a big storyline from week one. I can't imagine that they limit him, right? This is a, a coach that has to win or get fired. They're not going to be and, – and they're no shoo-in for the playoffs. It's not like when he was a Ram and they're like, well, let's save him for later because we know we're a good team. They need to win week one. It's just a matter of what you're saving for later and what you're not. I mean, they've been impressed with Brian Hill, and if Todd Gurley ha is Todd Gurley of old, let's use him. Yeah. If he's not, you you aren't increasing your chances to win by playing him. So that's does he have it? That's the, the question. The thing I'm looking for here is is Hayden Hurst. We know that Seattle was uh, very similar to the Arizona Cardinals. They were a very plus matchup for the tight end. Matt Ryan has. NFC West coaches got together. <laughs> yeah. They said, I want you all. They all got hypnotized into thinking the tight end on the opposing team doesn't exist. Yeah. Now, uh, Jamal Adams is a pretty good uh, Band-Aid for yes. that. So that that's what I'm looking for. Like, What is the usage of Hayden Hurst? You're playing Hayden Be Hurst, though. He's, oh, yeah. He's, yeah. Look, if you draft a Hayden Hurst, yeah, you're not making a, a pivot at this point. You're, you're playing him in what was a very plus matchup last year. But let's see what. What type of target share does Hayden Hurst actually get with to does it match the praise that Matt Ryan has just been showering upon Hurst over the offseason? On the other side of the girly matchup, Chris Carson is going to be out there for Seattle. That's something that I am watching closely. One of the things that I was staring down in our recent draft was what do I believe about the workload for Chris Carson? They practice reports are good, obviously. Chris Carson's a great player. Struggled with the fumbling issues, which caused some pivots for this offense. But Carlos Hyde is there, also had a good camp. And DJ Dallas, does he start taking some third down reps away from Chris Carson? These are some of the questions I want answered in week one. It's one of the reasons that I went for the ceiling of James Conner in our league of record draft over Chris Carson was because I am a little bit concerned. He had every bit of everything last year for Seattle. And I wonder if... You know, you combine a little bit more Russell Wilson focused offense with some more bodies in the backfield, whether that workload goes down. So we'll see it this week. Atlanta, um, kind of middle of the pack against the running back position last year. Obviously, you're starting Chris Carson in week one, but that's something I'm going to be watching. Jason, you love Tyler Lockett. He's your start of the week. Yeah, I mean, he's one of my, my guys. He's got the rapport with Russell Wilson, and I think both Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. Are great starts. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, you know, it's not like, oh, this is a Tyler Lockett game, so it's not a DK Metcalf game. I believe that those two will both have good games every time the other one has a good game, and 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 Russ will. It's it's more a matter of are they passing the ball, and I think that the Falcons can keep up here. 
And then uh, at the tight end position, are you? Uh, <laughs> no. Look, we all want to go to Disneyland, but look, it's it's Greg Olson for now. If you were starting one, yes, it's Greg Olson. I did hear Russell Wilson very recently heaping a lot of praise on Greg Olson. So it it sounded like to Russ he was there. He was one of their biggest you know off season acquisitions in his mind. And you know, I, I think you could do worse. I I probably wouldn't start Greg Olson, but I that makes me not consider Will Disley. The Browns travel to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. Ravens are seven and a half point home favorites here. It's a forty eight point over under. I would have actually expected this line to be larger for Baltimore at home, but it's a divisional game. You know, is this going to be another one of those defensive slugfests? Is this going to be more of the same Lamar Jackson we saw last year. Uh, it's going to be – this is the bounce-back year that you want to see from Cleveland. It has to start in Baltimore, though, Jason. Yeah, if you are playing against the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, what do you need to do as a team if you want any chance of winning? You have to control the time of possession. You have to keep the ball out of Lamar Jackson's hands. You've got to keep your defense fresh. That means you have to run the ball – left, right, and center, and your offensive line has to beat their defensive line, and you control the clock. That's what I expect the Browns' game plan to be. We already know the Ravens' game plan is going to be run the ball as much as anybody in you know league history and, and then throw it deep. My point is this could end up being a game that ends quicker than most as there's sure. so many you know rushing plays possibly meaning under on the score – um, and and a little bit of sadness for uh, some of the pass catching options. I don't know how much that will affect Odell Beckham or Marquise Hollywood Brown, two of uh, fantasy you know's favorite wide receivers out there. But I don't view this as a great matchup for either one of those players. Yeah, you might need to lean on the Deshaun Watson recipe of last night, which is if this game gets out of hand, if Baltimore gets out ahead, at that point. The softer secondary could open things up for, you know, Landry and Beckham. Mm -hmm. But it does seem like it's going. I mean, I think you're you're dead on. I think it's going to be a run centric game. Um, it's going to be something. You know, Kevin Stefanski is going to be putting his offense into place in this game against Baltimore. Um, so that forty eight point over under, I'm, I lean on the underside. Uh, it sounds like you do as well. Uh, Nick Chubb, though, he's in your lineup. Mark Ingram, he's my start of the week at home against the Cleveland defense. That was 23rd against the running back last year. We'll see if they improve on that, but Ingram is a safe play. Uh, would you? I don't know where you guys sit with Ingram. Do you play Ingram or, let's say, Lev Bell this week? Ingram. I would play Mark Ingram, yeah. What about Raheem Mostert against Arizona? Oof, that's – man, that's a, that's a tougher call. I, right now I lean – Mostert. I have them but very back close. to back in my rankings. I've got Ingram one spot ahead. Uh, I guess that's where I'll lean. Are yeah. you flexing Cream Hunt in this game? Or are you waiting and seeing what this role is? I'm I'm willing to flex him. This this matchup is interesting. Like it, this is it's far more interesting to me than the the Seahawks Falcons. Like there's going to be a a lot of fantasy points in that game, but there are so many off season storylines to un unveil like reveal yourself to us week one uh, because you have how involved is jk dobbins in that workload where it's been talked up a lot right now the cleveland browns offensive line they spent you know big big money big draft capital trying to repair it odell beckham the core injury that he had last year is he truly was that the what, reason right. for his crappy season yes uh, poor the reason, of words. the reason for the season yeah i mean the you know is it was it the injury or you know is he has he lost it yeah and then and then nick chubb kareem hunt you know is it how how much does that workload actually get split up does kareem hunt get utilized as much as he did at the end of last year so th this is a fascinating game i don't i don't disagree andy of your take of you know i mean just we afc north games th this is what they turn into they turn into just brawls and fights and things like that of just grinding it out you know man football yeah but so many things to so many storylines to be watching in this matchup and a plus matchup for 
your tight end, Mandrews. Oh, that, uh, Andrews yeah. is going to be great. And I, I want it, I want the Foot Clan listening. You know I love Hollywood. I want to go to Hollywood. I lo- He's one of my, my guys. This week is a bad matchup for Hollywood Brown. That's how I see it. I mean, d- you know, Denzel Ward, what's Hollywood's real trait, right? It's his speed. Mm-hmm. He's going up against a corner who is a real good corner in general. He's actually just one of the best out there, but who has 4-3-2 speed. That, I mean, if anyone out there can guard Hollywood, it's going to be someone like Denzel Ward. That's not a matchup I'm in love with, but that makes me think Mark Andrews. Goodness. Yeah, yeah Andrews is in line for a humongous year. I in, in leagues where, you know, keeper leagues where I had Kelsey or Kittle, I was looking for ways to cash in on those guys because mm. I think Andrews will move into the upper echelon this year. I think he has every shot to do it. This team is – it's still Hollywood and, and Andrews. I can attest that behind the scenes, you're yeah. trying to move your picks around, trade Kelsey away so that you could add a little bit of pick and then grab Mark yeah. Andrews, who you think could actually beat Kelsey this year. Yeah, yeah. I think the path is there. The volume can go up. Los Angeles, the Chargers, they take on the Bengals in Cincinnati. The Chargers are three-point road favorites. It's a 42-point over under. Mm. What? The debut of Joe Burrow against uh, Joey Bosa and company. I am uh, optimistic about the fantasy options in Cincinnati, but I am less optimistic about the rookie debut of Joe Burrow against this Chargers defense. Even though they don't have Derwin James, they are a formidable group, and it just takes one or two uh, Joey Bosa plays to uh, tilt a rookie in their sure. debut. So the you know I love playing the Chargers defense in this matchup. Um, we get to see Tyrod Taylor behind center. Yeah, the the, the storylines that I'm watching for in this game. I mean, number one, it's it's AJ Green. We have not seen him play football in quite some time. Allegedly had his first you know like a hundred percent practice in quite some time as well. So how. Is that connection there right away for A.J. Green and the rookie quarterback? Is he in your guys' lineup? I know you guys were, were believing in him. You drafted him uh, many, many places. So are you starting him? Full practice participant? I'm I'm very, very willing to to start him. Where I drafted him, though, it was you know sixth, seventh round. So he was my third, sometimes even my fourth wide receiver. So I'm not forced to play, but I'm... You playing I'm, Deshaun Jackson over A.J. Green this week because of the matchup? Uh, probably. That's the way I lean, too. Yeah. What about Hollywood Brown? I I'll, would uh, I would play Brown. I'll play Hollywood. And Jarvis? I'll play Green. Yeah, I'll play I'll play A.J. Green over, okay. him, over him. And then on the other side, Awesome Eckler. The, <laughs> talk about something Austin that... Austin Excellent. Uh, that, that spent... Uh, that was an exhaustive off, uh, off-season discussion... What is Austin Eckler? I mean, we know he's very good. Talent has never uh, been the question for for Austin Eckler. You are one hundred percent starting him, but it's what is the, what is the workload that we've been dreaming of? Yeah, it's, it's, we'll, it's, we'll talk it's, about him later too. I was going to say, oh it's yeah, not even about oh yeah, let's go. It's not even about awesome, excellent. He's <laughs> he's a starter for no. sure. <laughs> but the question is Justin Jackson, Joshua Kelly. Yeah. Like I want to know who's the next man up. Who's how's that? You know, carry oh, breakdown. At going? the end of every draft, I'm sitting there and I see Justin Jackson. I yeah. see Joshua Kelly. Now, I ended up taking neither in this league of record draft, but I'm like, oh, wait, well, yeah, one of them is going to have a big workload. I mean, there's probably 150 to 200 carries to be distributed beyond Austin Eckler, and I don't know where they're going to go. Yeah, I, and you know, you kind of buy into the rookie, but then you see Justin Jackson had a lot of success towards the end of camp. Oh my goodness. All right, Keenan Allen's the only wide receiver that you can start in Los Angeles. Hunter Henry, start of the week at tight end. Uh, there will be targets to go around uh, in this matchup, mm-hmm. and we'll see if the Bengals' defense improved upon, you know, last year they were 28th against the opposing quarterback. Tyrod Taylor. Uh, Taylor's a fine start to me. I think so. I, like, I, I'd start Taylor over Burrow in the same matchup. For sure. I'm not uh, Personally, I'm not starting any receiving option for the Bengals in this matchup. I think Joe Mixon has a good uh, a good week. That's kind of how the Chargers offense or, or their defense is set up. He doesn't know up. how to have a bad week. Oh, he sure does. <laughs> Go back to the beginning of last year. <laughs> he, he knows how to really have a bad No, that's bad something week. I'm going to eventually say. Oh, great. Yeah, that's, that's, good. Late, that's for uh, later. That's good news. But I do think this is a fine matchup for him this week. 
All right, Tampa Bay travels to New Orleans. What a matchup this is. Unbelievable. The Saints, the Buccaneers, storylines aplenty. Saints are three-and-a-half-point favorites, 48-point over-under. I, I, so Kyle has plugged in some interesting information. Our editor, Kyle the Borgogan, interesting information about this matchup. I had not seen this factoid. It's amazing. Tom Brady's team is an underdog in a regular season game for the first time what? since 2015? Are you freaking kidding me? This is unbelievable. How does it feel, Tom? Take it that. It feels pretty great to be Tom, I think. <laughs> uh, by the way, New Orleans only gave up one 300-yard passer at home last year uh, in those eight home games. So Brady's got a challenge to begin his – uh, they, you know, to begin his Buccaneer career. Yes, he does. Well, you know who's going to take him over the top? Leonard Fournette. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not starting Leonard Fournette. I'm not starting <laughs> Ronald Jones. I'm not starting LaShawn McCoy or Keyshawn Vaughn. The running backs for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are not a game I want to play with in no. week one. You don't want to play Yahtzee? No, I mean, last year, up the dice. Na- last year New Orleans was fourth against uh, opposing running backs in terms of fantasy points given up. You mix that with all of the things Jason just said. Alvin Kamara, though, he's in your lineup. Yep. Uh, Breeze and Brady, if you drafted them to be your quarterback, they're in your lineup. Yep. Uh, Mike Evans, you know, you'd like to see him there for Brady to have the opportunity to have a great debut. But, um, you know, you could see – I mean, who, who benefits from – Evans leaving in terms of target share I would do you actually look at Gronkowski this week that's, I, I would think it would be the tight end but that's a, that's another Yahtzee play like you've got all the dice in the can you're shaking them up and you're hoping that your guy is the one that a- ends up getting the receptions or the touchdowns it's like Jay how are you feeling about you know Gronk OJ Howard Cameron Braid I have been completely hands off on Rob Gronkowski just I'm willing to be wrong. I'm I'm willing to be wrong on on Gronkowski, but you know reports I'm hearing from uh, trusted friends in the industry. You can't rely on it. He's coming off. He, he didn't play football last year. He didn't have any preseason to get acclimated. Are you are you uh, gonna wild out and start Rob Gronkowski in his first week? I, I won't. I mean, if you drafted him and you want to call your shot, then start him. This isn't you know the worst matchup in the world, especially if Mike Evans is out. I don't believe that it's Gronk. Um, it will be some weeks. Gronk's going to finish the season with five touchdowns, you know, it, so he, he's going to get his. But I think O.J. Howard has a better fantasy season than Rob Gronkowski this year. You Which know, is listen, not to say you're starting him. Right, yes, I'm not. <laughs> don't hear what I'm not saying. My Are you, point, will you start any Buccaneers <laughs> under any circumstance? Uh, Chris Godwin yeah. is locked in. <laughs> I'll start Chris Godwin. I'll start Tom Brady. Um, obviously... Justin Watson is a superstar. <laughs> um, oh, we're going back to last year. Yeah, I think Scotty fun. Miller is the you know has the opportunity here uh, in this game to pick up targets. Yeah, Scotty Miller, uh, their last year's rookie pick, the the first wide receiver taken by this regime of the Buccaneers, does appear to be the third wide receiver for this team. That speed guy on the outside that we saw uh, Brashad Perriman in that role last year. But keep in mind, Brashad Perryman did not succeed for fantasy in that role. It was only when the two starters went down and he changed to a different role. So I'm not, I'm not expecting enough targets outside of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin to be confident elsewhere. The Cardinals go to San Francisco to play in the post-apocalyptic landscape. Oh, my goodness. You've seen some of those videos? Stay safe, everybody. Oh, my goodness. They're, they're actually monitoring air quality in San Francisco as to whether they can legally... It- play this game it sounds fair because if it gets over a certain point which is not really in a threat to do they've been practicing outside there uh if you listen to mike shanahan or uh <laughs> his dad yeah uh, kyle shanahan <laughs> my son's team's practicing <laughs> yeah outside. he's the authority on all air quality matters i don't know if you knew he's been put in charge of that uh but kyle shanahan's been talking about the fact that air quality control it looks like shanahan. Wor- looks worse than it is but 49ers are six and a half point favorites now. It's a 48 point over under. That line has moved down twice. Arizona played San Francisco very close last year in week nine. San Francisco won by a field goal in week 11. It was a close game. Uh, San Francisco out on top in that one as well. But that line has changed a couple of times. It's a pretty high over under. 
I, d- I wanted to make this the almost upset. I, I was too afraid of the homer calls. Sure. Uh, but I do think it'll be a competitive football game, in part because of San Francisco's uh, issues at the wide receiver position going into week one. Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel both dealing with injuries. It sounds like Ayuk is going to play, though. Like I, I, Debo Samuel, I do not think that he plays, but... But both. you have the compounding factor of a brand new rookie then. Sure. Yeah, both guys, though, were full DNPs, uh, did not participate in Thursday or Wednesday practices. It's it's really hard to install a rookie week of without practicing. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying. I do love that the line is high because I think that this is more of an offensive game than than a lot of people are expecting with the San Francisco 49ers' fantastic defense. Yeah, Andy, so if you drafted Kyler Murray, you, I mean, you had to take him high. Maybe you're a little bit concerned about this matchup. Do remember, two of Kyler's best fantasy games were against the San Francisco 49ers. He was a top 10 quarterback both times. Kenyon Drake, that was when the revelation happened, when he got traded to the Cardinals. You had no idea if he was even going to be the starter. And then he came out and had a, a very fine game against the San Francisco 49ers. So... I'm not looking at this matchup. If you drafted, you don't Cardinals, have an ability to pivot on those if, guys. If, if you drafted them, I'm I'm saying I'm still playing them with with full confidence. I'm not overly concerned about the matchup. Yeah, George Kittle is a must start. I think the beneficiary, if Debo and Ayuk miss, you will probably see some Kendrick Bourne, but you're, you're also going right. to see some Jordan Reed. And the sure. Cardinals were. Uh, we'll see what Isaiah Simmons does and what this secondary can do to protect against the kind of ridiculous numbers that they gave up to the tight end position last year, which they were dead last in the league, gave up 16 fantasy points a game. But having Kittle and Jordan Reed available to them, I, I can see both of them getting a lot of utilization this week. Absolutely. Uh, you know, one thing that I'm, I'm just now thinking of, this is more of a draft season question, but the fact that Jamal Adams and Isaiah Simmons both were added to NFC West teams in part to really try to up the defense against tight end, George Kittle, that's four of his games that uh, might be a little bit more difficult than uh, what he found last year. I'm more concerned about the Seahawks matchup. Let, let the rookie prove himself. Sure. But, Andy, you're right. I, I was going to bring up Kendrick Bourne's name. Not necessarily – I'm not plugging him into a redraft season long, but like he is a sneaky snart because he should see Byron Murphy who – like Byron Murphy, the cornerback for the Cardinals, he was put in a really tough situation last year as a rookie, but he got torched. I mean, he allowed ten touchdowns last year. They're moving him. The Arizona is moving Byron into the slot, but uh, I think Kendrick Bourne. It will not shock me to see him come down with forty with a touchdown this year. Or yeah, sneaky this week. Sneaky. All right, Dallas. The Cowboys traveled to Los Angeles. The Rams get to uh, show off their brand new stadium with no fans inside of it. And uh, believe it or not, at home, the Cowboys are three point favorites, mm. um, which makes this Andy's almost upset of the week. I had to double check that line. I guess it surprised me, Mike. You, we were talking this morning. It surprised you as well. Yes. You know the Rams at home. I look. I love Dallas. I think they're going to have a great season. I am kind of surprised they're road favorites by a field goal. It's a high over under fifty one and a half points. Should be a good game for fantasy players. Mm-hmm. Um, although deciding what to do at the running back position for Los Angeles is the oh. is the more difficult part. If I, I were think picking that's easy, if I were picking really? one, it would be Malcolm Brown. Yeah, I mean, no, no, it's it's as easy as Tampa Bay. I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna play the game. I'm not starting Cam. I'm not starting Malcolm Brown. I agree that Malcolm Brown will be the first man up. I think it will go Malcolm Brown, Cam Akers, Daryl Henderson. But That's I'm how not Jason starting. answers all start sick questions <laughs> on Twitter. I won't start anybody. <laughs> he just says no, none of them. No. But I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, the reality is where you I've drafted, never been wrong. Where you <laughs> <laughs> Nailed where, it. <laughs> where you drafted Cam Akers, you have other options. And I don't want to start him here because, look, I don't think the Rams' offensive line is good, especially in the middle. And I think that Dallas's defensive line might be one of the best in the league this year. They, they look great. So it, it, it's a worrisome matchup to me in the trenches when the Rams have well, the ball. Vegas agrees with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, you're almost upset of the week. I picked the Cowboys to cover, so we'll, 
one of us will be wrong. <laughs> no question. No question. Uh, Dak, you're playing him. Zeke, you're playing him. Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, both slammed into your lineup? Yep. Yeah, yes. starting them both. Okay. And then uh, we get to see, you know, Woods and Copper in your lineup. But Tyler Higby, that'll be interesting. What, how often are the Rams running 12 personnel? And uh, what are we seeing out of this offense this year? Is Gerald Everett going to make Mike cry in week one? Uh, no. No, he will not. I, if you drafted Tyler Higby, I'm, I'm playing him. Jason, you were smirking. What was, I, what's going on over here? I'm smirking because I don't know any take that I felt so confident on for such a long time and have <laughs> and then uh -oh. have completely uh -oh. felt. You're afraid now? Yes. Like, I was not in on Higby. I think Everett is pr pretty much a 1B to, to Higby. All of Higby's damage came when Higby – when Everett – it wasn't getting snaps on the field. I so I was anti Higby and now I'm I'm starting to second guess it. So yes, if you drafted him, you are playing him. It's not a bad matchup. I think one of these two tight ends will have a huge Yes. A huge week. I mean Dallas struggled against the tight end position as well last year. Mike, you have Blake Jarwin as your start of the week. Mm -hmm. I don't have the cojones to start Blake Jarwin in week one on the road. Oh, uh, that's that's fine. Me and Falcor will be fine starting Blake Jarwin. When on you our have Falcor, you don't need anybody else. That's true. What did we decide he was? He's a dragon? Oh, the dog dragon. Yeah, the dog face dragon. Falcor. People got very serious about <laughs> Falcor, by the way. Yeah. When we were speculating about what we he call is. call that a doggin? <laughs> I don't know if he's a doggin. He's riding it on. It's people's yeah. childhood. When you start messing with people's childhood, they get upset. Monday night football time, the Steelers. They go to New York to take on the Giants. Steelers are five and a half point road favorites. It's a 46 point over under. I like I like the Steelers in this matchup. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I uh, you know I agree with Jason James Conner start of the week, Eric Ebron start of the week. You picked two Steelers, Jason, and I'm with you. I get it. it. It's a great matchup. It's a great situation for both of those guys. You have some question marks at the wide receiver position in Pittsburgh. You know if you drafted Juju, you're going to play him. But beyond that, you know Ebron could be the second most valuable target this week. Yeah, I I think Deontay Johnson is going to play. I mean, at least – and I'm basing that off of, you know, he he put an IG post up that's like close to 100 or something like that. So he's going to play. I'm going to let the, the sleeper, you know, lay in the bed a little bit longer. I don't need to force Deontay Johnson into my lineup. Even though Break this, him up in week two. Even though this matchup against the Giants is, is pretty juicy – I think I'm gonna paw, I'm gonna press the pause on Deontay Johnson. I'm not gonna force you him see, in yet. Did you see what the judge did? Not not Giamatti. But, oh, that that was confusing. But, uh, Joe Judge. What did he do? He was so upset with practice, he made him do it again. Brand new practice. Sure. Just, uh, was coming off the field and just said, re-roll it, re who, does, it. who does that sound like? First year to a new team recently that is like, just the players are starting to get upset with him. The media is talking about how he's just so hard nosed. Do you remember? A couple of years ago, the first year for Matt Patricia, coming from that Bill Belichick tree is oh, really? just oh he was he See, Saquon was, loved it. He said he, he loved it. Oh, he loved that they ran it back. He thought it was great for the team. They needed it, but that's look, I I don't want to put something out there that they didn't like it. I just, I, I hope it succeeds, but that's a that's a dangerous path that you are walking if you if you run your team like that and you don't win. You're, well, just remember if you do something wrong, you want to do it wrong twice. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, but Daniel Jones, this is going to be tough. Uh, it Pitt is. Pittsburgh's one of the best defenses in football. Um, but we'll see. I mean, he, he's going to have his full assortment of weapons yeah, on the outside. You know, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, uh, Evan Ingram. These are, you know, having all of these weapons, he's going to have an opportunity if he can withstand the uh, pass rush from Pittsburgh. Yeah, and Evan Ingram, uh, I think he is in a, a great position here. Uh, I mean, Golden Tate, I – it sounds like he's going to play now. He was dealing with a uh, soft tissue issue, but if but if he's hampered at all, Golden Tate's absence or you know taking some snaps off that's a big benefit to Ingram, who then would you know slide him over to the slot, get a mismatch, have Ingram hit a home run. Yeah, I mean uh, Pittsburgh's defense being so good against wide receivers says they're going to need Evan Ingram in this matchup. I I do think he is a uh, as good a start as you can find outside of Saquon. But, but, man, I just don't like starting anybody against the Steelers right now. It's fair. Yeah. 
Tennessee, the Titans, they take on the Broncos. Titans are two and a half point road favorites. The Broncos, we've talked about, you know, they could be without Cortland Sutton or with a limited Cortland Sutton, which is a problem. Um, bad luck, Broncos, lately with yeah. Vaughn Miller and with uh, Cortland Sutton. And they have a new offensive coordinator, Pat Shermer, taking over this, this year. I like the Titans to cover in this game. <laughs> Um, but we will get to see whether or not we get a continuation uh, of the Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, A.J. Brown, you know, fantasy gold mine that we had at the back half of last season as they made the run to the to the title game. So, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. You know, a lot's been made of the fact that this year, more than any year ever, there were no tackling drills. You had a couple of scrimmages mm -hmm. that were full go, and players have not really been able to practice tackling. And a lot of pundits are saying that's going to be an issue come week one for certain for certain teams. And I just think two of the hardest people to tackle are Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown, and that was the second half of the season when there's plenty of practice it's they're just not you need your practice to tackle those two guys so i i love practice in a prayer yes practice in a prayer I, I i like both of those players this week but obviously you drafted them to start them so i don't think i'm saying anything crazy yeah this, i mean low passing volume matchup here i mean denver last year averaged just 31 passing attempts per game whether they let uh, lock do more this year we'll see and then tennessee obviously they're built around derrick henry so you're going to have to take advantage of your shots. A 41 point over under, that's low. So um, start sit decision wise. I mean, at this point, Melvin Gordon or Philip Lindsay, you're probably going Gordon in the debut. Yeah, I would. I probably would. But that was uh, looking through this matchup in week one. You know, with limited information. My only question here is, do you start Melvin Gordon? I, I you, people grab Philip Lindsay. He was a zero RB target and. By the sound of it, he you know is working his way back into a 50-50 timeshare. That doesn't mean he'll get the valuable touches. Melvin Gordon still would project as the goal line guy. He would project more as the the limited pass catching work that Drew Locke has shown for uh, for his running backs. But are you playing Melvin Gordon with any sort of confidence? Melvin Gordon or David Montgomery? Because there's a confidence issue oh, there. Oh my goodness! So that that's a situation people could be facing. I would go Melvin Gordon. Um, I, you know, I, I think that it's possible for David Montgomery to be limited. And Melvin Gordon, he, he was paid a lot of money to come in and be the starter. And I, I'm going to wait on all the camp reports to matter until after seeing, you know, I'm going to follow the money, follow the transactions. And, you know, a lot, you know, Mike, you have talked about Melvin Gordon not being efficient mm -hmm. or that great of a running back. But I think a little bit unfairly. Melvin Gordon is a good running back. He, you know, absolutely. He's he doesn't have the efficiency metrics that we might love. But there's a reason he just got paid a ton of money, and it's because he is a good running back. So I'm I'm going to start Melvin Gordon in that situation. Well, and he could he could end up with uh, being a huge beneficiary of a game that gets out of control too, where he is the pass catching back in Denver. He could have uh, four, five, six receptions. And that could be enough. Um, Philip Lindsay or David Montgomery, Jason? David Montgomery. David Montgomery. Yeah, I just wanted to make you pick David Montgomery today. Now, real quick before you move on, Noah Fant to me is – like I regret making Eric Ebron my start of the week because I love Noah Fant right now. Uh, so he's my co-star of the week, if you will. But, but I did you to, feel that way before the Sutton injury? Because you have no, no, you no it was, have any regrets. It, well, so. sure. It was it was in part due to the Sutton injury. The matchup is pretty good. I think they're going to need Fant to play well, and I I think he will. But I wanted to ask you to this question because I have this is this question comes in from Jason Moore of yeah. the Fantasy Football. Yeah, I've heard of him. I can't real hot figure head. out who to start between Hayden Hurst and Noah Fant. Hayden I, Hurst. Hayden Hurst. You can't figure it I out. I can't because I no, I can't. I, I this is why hate, this is why no fan is apparently a why star you, of the week. For why me. you hating Hurst? No, it's not Ooh. a hatred there. It's love and fantastic. Hey, listen, the important thing, it's and so I stress, I stress this, Jason. At the end of the day, just don't make the wrong call. Then I'll put Noah Fant in. Got it. <laughs> All right, we have a brand new segment this year on Fridays. Here we go. Drop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. 
Yes, this year we are very excited to be partnered with Monkey Knife Fight. Uh, you can get some some DFS. You know, it's a little bit of extra action going on on the weekends to to pair perfectly with your your season, your redraft, your dynasty leagues. What I love so much about Monkey Knife Fight is it's not just you know trying to set the lineup with the the budgeted guys. I have the salary get that the I, sharks out there. Yeah, it, like that's tough stuff. But you know what? We know how to do. We know how to play fantasy football. We know how to make a projection for a player, and you could go on a Monkey Knife Fight, and you can play props yeah like and we're going to be giving you hence the amazing title of this Prop segment. Like uh but we uh, and we're going to be giving you some finding a prop that we really like and you could go in there and play a game of more or less and it's they give you a statistic for a player like uh, so i'll start it off here with my example you can go and play more or less and and uh and guess the prop on the passing yards for the quarterbacks in the matchup of San Francisco versus Arizona. And right now, when last I checked, Jimmy Garoppolo, it was more or less than 268 and a half yards. That's what I mean, but this is simple. You play fantasy football, you know how to do this. In other for, words, is he going to throw for more yes, than so, 268 and a half yards and or so, less? So, wait, wait, wait. I'm confused. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, this sounds right, Jason, but... Look, last year, Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy G, he averaged 249 passing yards a game. That's well under the 268, uh, and 268 and a half yards. He was only over that threshold six times. Two of those times were against the Arizona Cardinals. And, so and by I, a lot. So I am taking the over. Combine the fact with uh, I, I give the edge to the offenses, especially offenses, you know, Look, you got George Kittle. You have a you have an elite guy that you can go to. Jimmy Garoppolo, 317 passing yards, 424 passing yards against the Cardinals last year. So it's not like he just squeaked by this threshold. He smashed it. So I I You're like the over. I like the over for Jimmy Garoppolo on the passing yards. He was phenomenal. I think it was like seven touchdowns, seven passing touchdowns in those two games. I love that, and I I I think that that very well might happen against this minorly improved Arizona Cardinals defense. I'm actually going with the other quarterback in this game for my prop because if yours happens, then mine will probably happen as well. I'm taking Kyler Murray more or less than 229 and a half passing yards. I'm taking the more. Uh, last season, he averaged more than 229 passing yards a game, but obviously that wasn't against a great 49ers defense. However, in his first game, ever against the 49ers. He's, he passed for more than 229. He had 241 passing yards. That was without DeAndre Hopkins. This is an offense that I think is ready to explode. They don't have Jason Verrett, or it, it, at least... Uh, didn't right, practice. He didn't practice. So even if he's out there and limited, that's uh, you know a, a hardship on the 49ers defense. So I, I like the over for both Garoppolo and... Kyler Murray and I would Arizona just game. throw in the addition of you when you said Kyler Murray had some uh, success last year that was without DeAndre Hopkins I did throw that in <laughs> oh I yeah. was dang it you got me <laughs> now got you. you got slimed all right uh dang my it. prop for the week I'm gonna go with this one Austin Eckler more or less 19 and a half fantasy points it is PPR format for the fantasy points over at monkey knife fight 19 and a half I'm taking the over Last year, Austin Eckler averaged 97 yards from scrimmage per game. That was ninth best in all of football, the Bengals. Oh, my. They gave up an average of 153.6 yards from scrimmage per game, fifth worst in the NFL. And you know what? When you have Keenan Allen and nobody else at the wide receiver position, yes, Hunter Henry benefits, but you know who else does? Awesome. A running back that can line up in the slot uh, and be a wide receiver. Uh, awesome excellence. Yeah. Awesome yeah. excellence, as we said. <laughs> so I'm going to hit the over on the Austin Eckler, All right. more or less there. And like Mike said, here's the key. You want to play some props, which is a really, really f – Al Borland has been on Monkey Knife Bite for the last two years raving about these props. We're so excited about a different way to kind of play the DFS game because this is like you said, Mike. You take the fantasy knowledge and you translate that – and those projections into the into the season. Mm -hmm. So, ballerspicks.com. That's your uh, quick way to get in there. Ballerspicks.com. Use the code BALLERS, and you get a 100% deposit match up to $50 on Monkey Knife Fight. Yeah. 
Use that code BALLERS at BALLERSPICKS.com. Yeah. I think we're done. I think the show's over. I think there's just nothing left between us and another football bunch of football games. <laughs> that's not true. We're doing a live stream. Yes, that's true this afternoon. And Mike is Sunday. He's going to be there for Sunday Live once again this year. Yeah, uh, it'll be very exciting to talk Kenny Galladay and Mike Evans injuries, but we got to do it. See you on Sunday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.